Hi everyone, it's Jen again. Um, I thought that I would go ahead and make a video update of um, just something I randomly got in my head that I wanted to try. So I have been working on a, um, a remake of the um, I've transmigrated it as the Supreme Villainous game. And I've kind of reached a point where most of like the coding problems have been um, solved. And now it's just me like going in and making a bunch of dialogue content. Um, which I didn't anticipate would take me so long because I thought, oh, I will just copy and paste a lot of the dialogue scripts that I already had in the original game. The problem was is that the quest system needed such a major overhaul um, that I ended up like having to kind of make a bunch of new text and new scenarios and really flesh in a lot of the stuff that was missing from the original game because I was just kind of making it up as I went along. So I've kind of reached this part where I'm in the, the slog part and um, just to kind of give you an idea of like why this is the most difficult part of the um, creating these games for me is the writing part is because I need to have quiet. I need to be alone in my thoughts and to be able to like focus and these days it's just hard. Um, even when I sometimes have like time to myself my mind is just not focused on being in that quiet space of like writing. Uh, my mind wants to like catch up on all these other things and I'm just like distracted with like the ideas of like things that I want to do or um, I'm just like multi I want to multitask like I get these urges to like draw and listen to podcasts and you know I don't know play an idle game in the background or something like I want to be doing all these things that I've like been waiting to do um, when I'm not working so um, that and I have been doing some um, kind of like independent contract work on top of my full-time job on top of being um, a, a mom so like yeah all that kind of stuff has just been really hard for me to sit down and like do the do the writing part which is like funny because like it's the part that doesn't require like technical skill like drawing animating coding are all things that require like a certain level of technical skill but I can kind of zone out when I'm actually doing it because I've already put in all the time to like building those skills versus like writing is requires it requires skill don't get me wrong but at the same time it's not like a technical skill like most of us um, have learned how to to physically write um, and then like a lot of the process is just like really mentally draining um, and I don't feel like there's any way to like make that less <laughs> less mentally stress strenuous I think that's just like a part of the process that I don't know that ever gets like easy um, so uh, correct me if I'm wrong on your thoughts with that but I've actually been finding that to be the most challenging part of like making games right now because my games are so like story heavy because that's what I'm usually the most interested in which gets me to where I am right now I kind of felt like taking a break from doing these very like narrative heavy projects um, and I just kind of felt like doing something goofy um, just to see if I could do it in in Renpai and I'm sure like Renpai is not like the ideal engine to do something like this but um, I just felt like kind of giving it a shot. Um, I wanted to make a really simple kind of like hero collector style game um, kind of melded with a visual novel elements. Um, and I wanted the combat to be really fast because um, I do play like the games I play these days are usually like mobile games and I want anything that has like a quick function where you can just like resolve the battle <laughs> right then and there is like kind of what I want. Um, so I was trying to think of like a way that can make the battle a battle system that's like snappy but then like has enough depth to actually want to like strategically place like certain heroes because it would be like a hero 
collector and you'd have no motivation for collecting different heroes if they were all interchangeable. Um, and then I also wanted to, um, was I going with that? <laughs> I also wanted to add like an element of kind of like um, high stakes or anticipation. Um, so I decided to make something based on like the idea of like rolling dice. So um, I also play um, tabletop D and D. So one of the things that I always felt was like pretty interesting about D and D is kind of like how the dice like play a pretty high stakes in like all of your sort of like interactions, whether it be combat or be um, be situational. So, you're not necessarily guaranteed to win at any point based on your stats alone, although stats kind of help influence your chances of winning. And that's the kind of, like, feeling that I wanted for this game. And so I'm not going to make, like, losing punishing. Um, losing is going to kind of be built into, like, the, the story of the game. Um, and first thing I did was I made a concept document where I was thinking of the different units that I would have. They would have, um, they would be defined by a couple things. There would be each battle encounter, you would have um, three units that you would be deploying. I thought three seemed like a pretty manageable number for somebody who's just like making something like this for the first time. And then I wanted to give these units like again, like three, three different properties <laughs> um, that would help influence, either give them an advantage or disadvantage in like certain combat situations. So there is first like the dice. Um, the dice are going to be either four, eight, six, or ten. I thought that was a manageable amount of like numbers to kind of deal with. <laughs> and um, maybe that will be expanded upon in the future, but right now those are the only um, dice allocations that you can have per unit. I wanted there to be um, a bonus that's given to your um, to your rolls if you happen to get a double or a triple roll. So that way the lower dice wouldn't be at a complete disadvantage as opposed to like having a high-sided dice because at least then you would have a higher chance of like rolling doubles and triples. And then I also wanted to um, give them uh, different elements and different class assignments, or I'm calling them factions because I don't want to like get things mixed up when I'm like trying to program this with like the keyword class. <laughs> so um, I'm just call I'm actually ch have changed this in the game to like naming it as a faction, and this is like loosely based on like tarot. Um, cards so like the priest mage knight rogue are based on like their sim symbols are going to be on like the cups um, wands swords and uh, pentacles or coins you know whatever uh, type of symbols to kind of represent like clergy um, merchant nobility and um, peasantry and so that's kind of like how I determined how the hierarchy was going to be as far as like which faction has advantage over the other factions, as well as their um, the elements being kind of your know, traditional RPG system. Uh, I wanted these three units that you can deploy in battle to have um, a front, mid, and range um, positioning and that certain classes could only be assigned to certain slots so that way you couldn't have just like an army of like three mages or like three priests or even three knights you have to have like one other type of faction like switched in there um, and then I wanted I kind of made like a default sort of like this would be the most archetypical like kind of unit stat allocation they're all going to add like a hit point, hit points to your your total party pool. That will be um, how you will like survive. How whoever loses the most 
the, their maximum amount of hit points first will lose the battle. So that's how victory, the win condition, will be determined. Um, and then I also decided that I wanted to make like more special knight, uh, special units. That would be like kind of your heroic unit that have slightly higher hit point bonus that they offer to the party, and then they would have like a special ability that could trigger with a certain chance. Again, everything's based on chance. <laughs> a certain percentage chance for like their special ability to trigger, which may or may not like help um, determine the outcome of the battle. And um, so those the, those special abilities are going to be like the last thing I implement. Uh, I haven't implemented those yet, but that's like kind of like my my idea going forward. Um, so my first my first <laughs> goal in programming this was just to get that battle system working. Um, and you can see I started out by making like these objects for um, who the player is going to be because I wanted the player to be able to um, customize their name and their gender and to keep track of um, their wins and losses and I also wanted to um, have a kind of like a guild that the player would be collecting all these units under um, and then that would be this party um, where you're going to be able to customize the name of your guild and then um, these are supposed to be the assignments of the, the units that you deploy as the front, middle, and rear position and then whatever your hit point total is going to be once you've made those assignments. So those are what those are um, supposed to be keeping track of. And then you have your units, which are going to have their own name. Um, this owns is going to keep track of whether or not the player has acquired them and can deploy them. They are going to have their dice, um, which again was like the 4, 6, 8, 10. They're going to have their element of fire, air, earth, water. Their faction, which would be like their class, their mage, knight, rogue. Um, they're going to have the hit points that they add to the party pool. They're going to have um, the status of whether they've been deployed so that you can't deploy them more than once. Um, and then these, this loyalty was going to be um, kind of like their more the, uh, what do you call it, uh, the visual novel aspect of it, like how they are getting along with you as their commander, and then um, whether or not they have a special would go in that slot. So that that's kind of like what I've built so far. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty basic, and it's probably not the most like optimized way of making something like this, but it's like the way that I know how to make it. So yeah, but we we're 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 going with that. Um, so I started out by. Um, just trying to make sure that these things work. So when I go into launching my project, you'll see that there's no art, <laughs> there's no customization of anything. This is like out of the box RenPy um, font and menus and everything. So um, there's just like a little bit of flavor text. Like, what can we call you? And I can so I can put my name here, like Jen. And forgive us for simple-minded ways, but how should we regard you as? And so that here you can choose your preferred um, pronouns. So I'm going to go with she. Thank you for minding your humble servants, my Lady Jen. So this again here, Lady Jen, is um, where I've assigned like if they if they choose. Sorry, let me go here. So if they choose she, it's going to assign the surname of Lady. So here you can see in the script that whenever um, the surname comes up, it's going to go back to like, oh, what did they pick? They picked she, so this is going to be lady. And then it's going to say my name here. Um, You shall carve your noble title forever in our hearts. Forgive us again for our insolence, but we desperately plead for your wisdom. We are but a few insignificant fodder trying to survive these trying times. 
would you so mercifully bestow a name upon our lovely ragtag group? Um, so let's call it the, let's call them the, we'll just call them the heroes. Okay. Da da da. My lady said that that must be. Please have mercy on us, the heroes, and show us the way, oh great lady. There are three possible, three formation positions. Please note, blah blah blah. Okay. Um, and so then we're going to choose randomly one of these elite units that has like a little bit better stats than like the base units. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pick the fighter, choose a unit for the front position. So here it knows that I chose the fighter, so that's one of my options for the frontline positions. So I'm going to go ahead and pick that. Um, the mid for, uh, for Rose and Priest. So let's go ahead and pick the, the kind of criminal. Um, a unit for the rear position reserved for mages and priests. And let's go ahead and pick um, priest. So here I have like just saying, okay, the heroes is consisting of ruin, ruin, thief, and priest versus the earth, the thugs who are the earth thug, the water thug, and the fire preacher. So I am basically fighting with a fire knight, a um, I think it's an air thief and a water priest versus an earth thug, a water thug, and a fire priest creature. So this is going to be the first roll. Roll the dice. And so here I have my my numbers um, that I've rolled plus my my this first one has just a minus one is my elemental bonus, which in this case is a disadvantage, and then the plus four is a faction or class bonus, um, which in this case is plus four, so that like, kind of evens that out and it gives me a total of nine. The thugs have just rolled excellently, so <laughs> I lose this skirmish, and I'm going to take um, a total of the difference of those two numbers in damage, so this is my current health. I should probably label this like HP or something, so it's not like confusing, but right now this is just a test to make sure that my code is working. <laughs> But it's not over yet, so it's doing an assessment to see if anybody's reached a zero or less, and um, it says, okay, we need to go on to repeat that game loop. Um, skirmish 2. We're going to add a plus 1 to our skirmish counter. Now we're on the second round. Roll dice. We got a 3, a 3, and a 2. There is a variable check here to make sure that um, that the that any of these dice are equal to each other or if they're all equal to each other and if so then it's going to apply a multiplier on it so instead of 3 plus 3 plus 2 it's 6 plus 6 plus 2 because I get a double bonus for where I roll doubles and then um, again it applies my my bonuses at the end which I get a total of 17 but <laughs> the facts have also got a double bonus <laughs> darn it I thought I was doing so good and they just annihilated me. Dang those like those thieves. They rolled sevens. Fourteen plus fourteen plus one twenty-nine. I'm I'm getting slobbed. Just completely clobbered. Even though I've got a class advantage, so I'm just rolling like crap. Okay, so four versus twenty. It's not over yet. I can still make it. Give me a triple. Okay. 6 plus 4 plus 1, 4 plus 7 plus 2, 13. Finally, we win one round, and I only did like 1 HP damage, so that's depressing. Now let's try again. I got another double bonus. It's not very much because it's 1s. Um, that's a little depressing. They get a double bonus, and yeah, I, I, I just got, I get destroyed. Um, heroes are exhausted. We were defeated. Lady De Jen, we're done for. Almost done for. Good thing it was mostly a nameless generic nobodies we lost in battle. Who can be easily replaced? Would you like to try again? So, um, let's go ahead and try again. I do have a reset call statement that's going to reset all my um, variables back to default. Um, and so let's go ahead and do that again. So I I'm, was feeling pr pretty good about my setup as far as like my bonuses that I had. I don't know why. 
the bonuses are not helping me out too much. Okay, we we're rolling a little bit better this time. They got another double bonus. Man, these thugs. It's because they've got two of the same class. So, I don't know. They're just rolling like lucky, but at least I, I beat them out despite the bonus. <laughs> I've got a mage this time. So, the mage has a um, 10 sided dice. So, I have potential to like get higher number there. I think that mage is like, um, I think the mage is doing pretty well here. So 20 versus 8 for HP, skirmish 3, and we got 13, they got 6. Oh, they've got like one health point left. <laughs> Come on, we got them this time. <laughs> so this time um, we beat them. So would you like to have mission of another pummeling? And then I can do that. So um, that is the game. The base of the game seems like it's working okay. I still need to go in there and refine some things. Um, but um, this is this is what I wanted to accomplish um, before I moved on to the next step. I wanted to make sure that I got this part of the game working. So now that I know that my um, that my object classes are working and um, my um, my call statements for like doing running the battle um, are working. I'm going to start thinking about how I'm going to implement like the visual representation of all this information. So that is what I'm currently just about to start. I'm um, starting. So that was all what all this was like. My concept was, and then my next concept is going to be what the art is going to be. And I'm going to start by planning this in what size I want things to be. So I'm thinking that um, the characters that you choose will be represented. <laughs> I just took some stock background of like generic RPG background from like Google. Um, you can see there's like a stamp in there because I just wanted to have something to get an idea of like what the background canvas is go was probably going to be like. And then these, um, these goofy, like, little, little line, like, thick line things here are just me trying to, like, get a rough idea of how large the character sprites are going to be. Um, if I was going to have three on each side, I decided that I wouldn't want to go over, like, 300 by, like, 275 pixels is like the box that I want them to be contained in and that will include their um, whatever like little combat animation that they might have or their, their idle pose and victory pose so like I wouldn't want to make the character just in their resting pose like take up that entire square because I wanted them to have a little bit of room to move around but they're not going to be like doing cartwheels <laughs> These, these strange looking boxes above their head was me deciding where I was going to have the dice um, sitting to show what they have rolled, they have individually rolled. Um, so that is going to be 150 by 150 is the space I'm going to allocate for that. And I will have different like artwork to represent like which, um, which sided dice they have. So if they are four sided dice they'll have a triangle. Six sided dice, they'll have a square, etc. Um, these lines over here is where I'm going to have a HP bar to show the total health of the party. And then this, and then somewhere above that, I'll have the name of the um, of the army or the guild um, above their health bar. And I don't know, some kind of like little verses that'll maybe say what round of skirmish they're on. I'll probably have there. And then I left a bunch of room at the bottom to whether or not I'm going to have text there. I have decided I might just have all the information just like kind of like splashed on the screen. I haven't gotten that far, but I think that I'll have a little bit of flexibility to do it either way. Um, and so that is just kind of what... Oh, I didn't want to open that. That is what I was just kind of planning with there. So... Um, I'm going to say the dice box is going to be 150 by 150. And um, we want the health bars to probably be around 
So I'm gonna say six fifty by maybe forty. Health bar will be like six fifty by forty. And I'm gonna wanna try to get their names to fit in. Maybe like four hundred by thirty-five. Main plate be four hundred. Something around there. That that can be easily fudged. So that will probably just be like a font. Um, and so yeah, that is kind of what I'm planning stages there. Um, there's going to be probably two different types of screens. So there'll be this like battle screen, and then there will be like more of the visual novel type screen where um, I will have like more like the standard illustration, which will probably, you know, be around like 500 pixels wide by um, a little room, maybe like 850. Well, 900. Nine nine hundred, because you know it'll it'll kind of crop off there wherever the um, the dialogue box is, but I can have that be semi transparent, so you can kind of see a little bit of the underlying drawing. It would be nine nine fifty. Let's do. Let's plan on 550 by 950 in case I want to put more than one sprite on a screen. Mm, I think for this one I was planning on actually not doing um, transparent movie files because I was having issues with like lag still and I don't know how to resolve that totally. So I was thinking especially since this is a hero collector that's going to be based on like rolling dice and stuff that I think I'll have all the characters on cards like they were in the original Soul Union. Um, so we will go ahead and make the cards all like one uniform size and we will make those above the dialogue box so maybe we will go ahead and make those so that we can have maybe comfortably lay four cards on s at least three cards on screen so maybe I will want to be able to swap out those sprites for doing like um, doing kind of like special attack animation or something so I think we will go kind of small on those actually I'm thinking about a little bit more. Maybe we will do um, boxes were kind of small in Soul Union. I'm thinking maybe 750 by mm, maybe 725 by 3. All right, so let let me go ahead because I'm like kind of bad at thinking about spaces. So I'm gonna make a new file. I'm just gonna see how many of these I can fit on the screen comfortably. So let's say they did a triple attack or something. And I want to have all their portraits like represented while they're doing that. There wouldn't be enough room for both. Maybe I could just have them kind of overlap with each other though. So if they do a triple attack, there's a they do a triple attack. That's about the middle of the screen there. 
I can just have their cards like overlapping. Let's make these different colors so I can see it better. And we'll change the opacity. Okay, so I'm pretty satisfied with that amount of overlap. So I think that if the teams do like a double attack, I will have them show their portraits that they do that they have on these cards. Um, that will also be used for story moments. Um, but they will do like kind of some kind of fierce expression, and then um, if it's a triple attack, they will kind of like all kind of like spread like overlap each other uh, a little bit. And then if they do a double attack, then they will have room to have a little bit of spacing between them. Um, but that way I can fit on the screen in case there's like a double <laughs> or triple attack from the enemy. Then they can also have their portraits. Um, I think that's still large enough to do like kind of like story moments. Um, I can always force Ren Pi to like kind of scale up a little bit, but I think that'll be okay. I think that'll be okay size. And where are we at? We're not at like a, a size that I thought was going to be like easy, right? <laughs> ah. I was trying to make it like an easy size. Did we decide on an easy size? Do you remember? Like, uh... 725 by 350 around. Okay. Cool beans. So I'm going to add that to my thing. I'm going to make um, hero card. It's going to be 750, no, 725 by. Why am I like screwing it up? Should be 725. So, highly recommend that you take the time to plan out how your layout is going to look and decide on what size you're going to need your assets to be. And then when I'm making the, um, making the assets, I will make them a little bit larger just so I can crop and shrink down whatever I feel like I need to. Um, but I will at least know like, the template that I'm going to be fitting everything on um, so that I can plan um, to make my assets accordingly. All right, hope you found this interesting and helpful. And uh, good luck on any of your projects that you might be working on. Remember to enjoy the process. Bye.